Are you prepared to relinquish everything you assumed you had some awareness of? The idea of time, to put it concisely, is that there is no such thing as time. And it's not simply us saying that, however, the consequences of a new research concentrate on what is implied by this revolutionary supposition. For what reason could what we usually comprehend as time really be just a deception of quantum physics? What ends can be drawn from this progressive presumption? Albert Einstein once said, For us physicists, the differentiation between past, present, and future is only an illusion, though an obstinate one. Emotional time, with its emphasis on the now, has no goal or meaning. Indeed, the more we concentrate on this point, the clearer it becomes that what appears so real to us in our regular daily lives could not be more baffling. While time often represents just a few numbers on the clock or a particular day in the calendar, we typically disregard the topic of what time really is. By definition, we are dealing with a physical quantity that describes the arrangement of events in a unique, irreversible manner. This in turn influences everything because the universe moves not only spatially, but also temporally, from its beginning in the Big Bang to its end. Thus, time is fundamentally linear, but it continues to present us with new mysteries. As referenced at the beginning, a new study has suggested that time isn't a fundamental mainstay of the universe at all, but merely a deception that results exclusively from quantum entanglement. But what does that imply? Does this mean that there is no such thing as a beginning or an end to our current reality? Well, sadly, it's not quite that simple to comprehend why time has become the focal point of countless scientific discussions to this day. We must first consider the various ways available to specialists in this manner. On the one hand, there is Einsteinian physics, which explains the cycles of the universe on a grand scale. On the other hand, there is quantum mechanics, which deals with what occurs on a minuscule scale and often appears to contradict classical physics. Let us consider Schrodinger's cat, which forms the center of a thought experiment published by the eponymous physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1935. In this context, a cat is placed inside a box along with a lethal poison but nobody knows when the poison will escape. Consequently, the cat can be considered both dead and alive at the same time. Its state would only change to one of the two states through direct observation. But what does a cat in a box have to do with quantum mechanics? It's quite simple. Quantum mechanics recognizes a superposition of this sort. That is, the superimposition of different states. Only when a measurement or observation is completed does the corresponding system settle into one of the superimposed states. Schrodinger's focus on time was to show the contradiction between quantum mechanical and classical physical standards, given that a cat cannot be dead and alive at the same time. The wondrous universe of quantum entanglement, however, not only recognizes superposition, it also recognizes entanglement. In standard quantum theory, particles do not have a definite state. You can assign them relative probabilities of being in one state or another. As mentioned earlier, this particularly shifts towards measurement, at which point the particle assumes one of these states according to these probabilities. It becomes significantly stranger when two particles interact with one another. Their individual probabilities are no longer independent of each other, but instead coupled together. They are now parts of a complicated probability function that describes both particles. To better understand this, we can consider the following example. In an experiment on entanglement, two electrons are created simultaneously, and their spin, or in other words, their intrinsic angular momentum, is measured in two different devices. Eventually, it seems the electrons each have opposite spins, which is astonishing given that, according to the superposition, their state was not predetermined at all prior to the measurement. The reality is that it was only the measurement that caused one particle to settle on one state and the other particle to choose the opposite state simultaneously, regardless of their spatial separation from one another. Thus, the two electrons can be perceived as an entangled system. Furthermore, quantum entanglement also defies the notion of locality, which states that processes only affect their immediate spatial environment. In the case of quantum entanglement, the entangled particles can be light years apart yet remain inseparably connected. Considering this, it's not surprising that Albert Einstein famously disliked the so-called spooky action at a distance. After all, the exchange of information would need to occur at speeds faster than light. Despite this, the principle of quantum entanglement may now offer scientists the opportunity to finally unveil 
the true essence of time. In a paper published in the journal Physical Review A, the lead authors of the study from the Italian National Research Council point out that it is feasible to reconcile time with both the classical laws of physics and the rules of quantum mechanics if it is a result of entanglement. Above all, in quantum mechanics, time represents a certain peculiarity, an inflexible stream from the past into the present. However, time remains outside the strange and ever-changing quantum systems and must be perceived by observing changes in external units, such as the hands of a clock. According to Einstein's general theory of relativity, time is intertwined with space and can be warped and stretched in the process. Because of this distinction between classical and quantum mechanical laws, researchers have been at an impasse for quite some time. Yet the aforementioned study now suggests that time may just be an illusion arising from quantum entanglement. But what does that mean? The time problem isn't new within quantum mechanics. The Pagewater instrument proposed as early as 1983 is a hypothesis that states that time for an object only emerges through quantum entanglement with another object that acts as a clock for a non-entangled system. However, there is no time at all, and the system perceives the universe as frozen and eternal. By applying this system to two hypothetical quantum states, a vibrating oscillator and a collection of small magnets acting as a clock, the researchers found that their system could be described by the Schrodinger equation, which predicts the behavior of quantum objects. However, this occurred without the explicit use of time. The role of the clock was taken over by the states of the small magnets. In the next step, the researchers repeated their calculations twice more, first assuming that the magnetic clock and then the oscillator represented visible objects. Their equations rearranged to those of classical physics demonstrating that the flow of time is a result of entanglement, even for objects on a large scale. In this context, the researchers emphasized that the proper or, more importantly, consistent approach is to start from quantum physics and understand how to derive classical physics from it, not the other way around. Other researchers, however, have been perhaps cautious in their statements. Although it is mathematically consistent to conceive of time as entanglement between quantum fields and quantum states of three-dimensional space, nobody knows whether this picture will result in something new or productive, such as changes to quantum physics and the general theory of relativity. What does Michio Kaku say about time? Assume we have truly misunderstood time all along. Wouldn't it also be possible that one day we could uncover attributes that currently seem utterly impossible? Well... That is exactly what Kaku was asked during an interview. More specifically, the increasingly popular physicist was prompted to share his thoughts on the concept of time and time travel, and he had genuinely astounding things to tell. But listen for yourself in this quote. Let's start with Isaac Newton. Newton believed that time is like an arrow. Once shot, the arrow moves in a straight line. One second on Earth is the same as one second on Mars, one second on Jupiter, etc. The arrow never takes a different path. However, then along came Einstein. He said, not so fast. Time is like a stream, a river that winds, speeds up, and slows down. The question that concerns us so much is, can the stream of time perhaps split? Could it ever form different river arms? Or is it possible for it to shape circles and wander around itself? In this case, time travel is something we need to take very seriously. Since Einstein's theories allow for time travel, the concepts for time travel are actually viable within his framework. For instance, consider immense rotating chambers. It's you just around the chamber light years and away. return before you but left. It appears to be, think of existence for all intents as a sort of purposes, elastic, unfathomable like a trampoline that we net. will at any point arrive stretch the trampoline net too much. This is all the more lamentable given Perhaps that the divine we can body the trampoline isn't just into the nearest a exoplanet to which Earth, would allow us to but travel also back in thought time. of as potentially However, livable. However, sadly, as given usual, that we are not, there is a catch. Event. The energy Succeeding required in overcoming to do this the planetary is world right close Not to even home. an atomic bomb One has could feel sufficient that energy to operate travel a time machine. Remain an unfulfilled a time dream machine. forever. We would However, need the energy of a dead star. Be that way. With no fact, guarantees, scientists the theoretical are currently question hard of time work travel on the development of new by drive some mysteries that will soon For enable instance, us to leap to the stars. What might happen if we kill our grandfather before we were born? Like thus denying our, our own existence. But what heavy well, concepts are being discussed to Kaku, in this respect? There are two ways to resolve these their troubling execution? thought experiments. And could Proxima the first be way is called self-consistency. Become Even our interstellar springboard. If anyone knows how to explore the vastness of space, 
it would essentially be impossible for us to no do surprise, so. Because Furthermore, Voyager 1 perhaps and there 2 is some have already traveled on imaginable distances from creating time paradox 6 billion kilometers. However, I don't think so. I feel that the flow of time divides this in such cases to 165 exactly as we see it in Back to the Future. The simplest units, way to explain time paradoxes is not that we don't need to add any further assumptions beyond those of quantum mechanics. If we travel back into the past and save Abraham Lincoln from the assassination around 4.2 then we would have years from the different us. Abraham Lincoln. We realize if you that the shoot Voyager your own parents before you are need born, to fly an additional you have 70, shot another person's parents before they would arrive so, if you at will, our planetary neighbor. We change a timeline that, that we, the identical Voyager probes, are Indeed, by no means even chugging Stephen through Hawking space suggested at a relaxed that there must be some physical law that are prevents us from turning back space. the clock at around 61,000 kilometers per hour. Despite we know this, of no laws of the physics title for the that prevent us from traveling backward does not through go time. To Voyager, it appears to, the to be viable probe, with the laws we know, which was launched in 2018. Catches, we really need the energy to stagger that of a star to do that. The progress that understands kilometers must be extremely advanced. This year. But it even isn't this speedy out. probe would need centuries before it could show up from our upcoming video.